And there's a lot of promotional type of stunts that make more sense for Deadpool than they do for Iron Man or Avengers mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Like you can do sillier stuff, weirder stuff, to try to get people's attention maybe. <laughs> Welcome back to the break room, everybody. I'm Zach Huddleston, and joining me today on our illustrious panel, I've got Brandon Barrick and Jessica Clement. Did your social media say the New York Times? Yeah. <laughs> what? I didn't say that. I told, I told, I told Dashiell to do that. We should have all put something every, stupid. Every tweet from the New York Times is from Zach. That's right. I've been, ghost, I've been ghost writing those for years. Zach, Nobody you weren't knows. behind that problematic uh, Tara Swift op-ed, were you? No. Okay. Uh, I don't, I currently, I officially deleted my ex account because I haven't oh, tweeted in a million years. So I was like, I don't even need this to exist anymore. So I, I no longer have a social handle, so I told Dash to put in at New York Times. So Snack Huddleston is up for grabs? That's right. It's all, it could be yours. Uh, so on today's episode, besides uh, defunct social media accounts, we're going to be talking the Marvel's deleted scenes, oh. pre-Echo hype, oh. uh, last night's Golden Globes is a kickoff to award season, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be answering the question, will Deadpool make $1 billion at the global box office, and does it even matter? Oh. How much, what movie would you say is like the quickest to a billion? It's a great question. We got to save that. Just oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, because I don't that. know if a billion's a big number. It is. It it's is huge. I think was Barbie, the, Barbie and Mario were the only movies to make a billion dollars in 2023. Okay. They definitely did. And Evan, Evan. Yeah, uh, the movie that made a billion dollars the fastest is everyone's favorite film, Avengers Endgame, oh, yeah. in five days. Five <laughs> days, basically <laughs> a long weekend. It made a billion. Well, I got like twenty of my dollars. I think there was some sort of stat too that, like, in twenty twenty two, Disney had like seven movies hit a billion dollars, and in twenty twenty three, they had zero movies hit a billion. Could you imagine just owning a place where your movies just keep making billions? Of dollars? Yes, and that's why they're desperate to get back to that yeah. place, possibly in twenty twenty four. Five. Okay, well, anyways, we're <laughs> stepping on our later topic. Hey, let's get into it. Uh, let's start with today's headlines. Whoa, whoa, whoa. look at that. Is, new that your new York Times? Is that your New York Times? Is that your New York Times? It's my byline there. Right? <laughs> whoa. Uh, okay, uh, hot off the press, Netflix shared a photo to announce that the final season of Stranger Things is back in production. Ooh, oh, there it is. Okay, let me look for Erica. Where is Erica? This is, first of all, I'm Matt. This is a poorly staged photo. I get they're putting everyone in it. Just line them up. It looks like Are they're they still in, dating? I, I, the front. Front. But are you kidding? It looks what? like really? they're in our studio. That's what no, our studio is. Should we, we should take a photo like this for New Rockstars. I'm not joking. Oh, that's fine. Uh, now, did they make a no. neon sign? No, or that's, know, that's, that's digitally added. That's digitally added. added. Okay. But also, they're still dating in the front. The sister and they're the They're still brother. together. Wait, Remember the, who is that in the front? That's the bro Will's Will's Joe older brother. Joe something, the older brother. The older brother. Yeah. Not, not Joe Curie. It's the oh, no. it's Will. Um, it's Will's yeah. older brother, the yeah. one that got caught on a plane with some stuff. <laughs> and then the the sister. Char Charlie Heaton. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The There's, they've been together since like season two. Yeah. They've been wow. together for a long, and it's been since what? Since the last season? Yeah, the last season came out in 2022. Yeah. Uh, probably shot in 2021. So they haven't said what a release date for this. Obviously these, it's like two movies combined. There's lots of it's special be, effects. Yeah. They're um, really long. Two, is, is it like a two part season no, find or no. something like that? The last oh, no. one was released in two batches, yeah. right? Uh, a month apart or so. Or they wanted um, to do like a couple episodes and then the last batch is like a long movie type thing. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, I know that their studio, isn't they, aren't they doing other projects that are kind of like adjacent to Stranger Things now? Yeah, I know the Duffer Brothers, the creative team behind Netflix, has already announced like spinoffs and other projects and other Netflix projects. Uh, I don't know if they're going to take place in the world of Stranger mm. Things. I know they have like different things aligned with Stranger Things and like it might become kind of a, them kind of developing a Ryan Murphy American Horror Story-esque kind of thing. Poor Mike Flanagan, he's sitting there like, I keep trying I think, I <laughs> and think I'm you, not giving anything. You landed on the name there for their new show. They should call it Different Things. That's Stranger Things and I have Different Things. Evan, don't give him the satisfaction. And then? That was other important. things. Other things. Yeah. And some then things. finally, some more things. <laughs> <laughs> so we should some we things. should genuinely stage that photo yeah. in that same yeah, way. That yeah, that would yeah. be so fun with, with the door, with the rolling door in the back. Oh, it yeah. is our studio. But, it literally looks just like this. We're excited, and you know, it's it's helpful to remember, even though it's been two years since we've seen that show. Like, 
when Stranger Things comes out, it's the biggest thing in the world, it right? Is, like yeah. that, if you look at like historic streaming numbers, nothing comes close to Stranger Things as far as like hours watched, people watched, whatever. And like some people have argued that like, it's truly the only great originated on a streaming service franchise IP. Okay. Yeah. When you think about all the Marvel stuff and Star Wars started in film, then they moved it over to streaming. Wait, even, so we're, yeah, we're even just stuff like, like Wednesday mm. is based off of Adam's family, right? Uh, like I'm, original IP that has become something that you could build a theme park mm. ride around or something like that. Yeah, 100%. You know, it's the it's still number one. By it the was mile. it was that chokehold of perfect timing with the '80s when we were like into that '80s shit. We were like, oh, everyone was going back to neon. They were like, yes this is great. And we were so obsessed with Stranger Things. And then the best algorithm is just killing the most innocent person and making us all very angry. <laughs> who would have known? You mean Barb? Yeah, Barb, just Eddie, Barb. Well, as, yeah. as Sean Astin's poor character that oh. was existing. Why was he killed? We all started getting dog? mad and just kept like eating it. Do you think it. they will jump ahead for this final season? They've got to do a time jump. These, these children like are so years. old. I don't think they could stay like... It can't pick up the day the last yeah. season ended. I mean, I, yeah. I feel like they've aged up so much at this point. What if they're just adults? <laughs> it's like it. They're just not... Well, they took this photo for no reason. They're just clear adults now. <laughs> totally existing. new cast. Yeah, yeah, 11 is just like, hey, I've been trying. I've been trying. Smoking a cigarette? I've been trying. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't it's, it's Meg Ryan uh, <laughs> as 11. Um, I would, we're excited for it. We have no idea when we're going to see this. Maybe not until 2025, but uh, uh, Stranger Things, great to build that hype now. Um, next, we got some home release date, a home release date for the Marvels, February 13th, mm -hmm. a little over a month away. We're going to get the Marvels on Blu-ray and other uh, mediums. Uh, and I think we have a clip to play that they released. Yeah, one deleted, deleted scene. scene. Who deleted it? <laughs> the director. <laughs> I'm not at 100%. Yeah, we switch places whenever we use our powers at the same time. It's kind of a mess. You want a whip scarf? It's not the only scene that's going to be included in the deleted scenes, yeah. Yes. Uh, we'll segue back into that. Just really quick. We're on Twitch, which means people also have been subbing on Twitch. Uh, Basil Barrel Spinner giving out 20 gift subs. Whoa! Oh, thank you so much. Give me, give me, give me Basil. a <laughs> sub after midnight. Basil, Basil, however you pronounce it, we appreciate you. Um, but yeah, that's one, one deleted scene out of, uh, we think there's four, rumored to be four deleted scenes coming out on the Blu-ray release. Uh, what do you guys want to see? Well, I, I also, I don't, it doesn't count as a deleted scene, but I saw there's also going to be a gag reel. Oh. Which would be fun, fun because I think like one thing they're trying to play up with this release that they did a little bit during the press for the mil film is like how much the cast got along and how much fun it was on yeah. set. And that like, set was probably so much fun. Yeah. I would go crazy on that So there's set. probably some pretty fun gags, especially, um, you know, yeah, with them having good chemistry together. And mm -hmm. As far as deleted it. scenes, I would love a deleted scene that tells me what the hell's going on on Xandar. Wait, let me what's say. What's going on with Xandar? I'm afraid you're going to take mine. No, keep going. Well, it's yours. Wee. I've had one. Okay. My my one is I want to see where the freaking flurkins went. Oh, okay. Like, how many people. After they got to Earth? Yeah, because I, I would take one. If I saw take a stray cat, oh, and then I'm like, yeah, yeah. it ate my furniture, and I still love it. <laughs> it ate my other cat, and I still love it. <laughs> what was your other ones? Uh, I would love a deleted scene. I would like to know more about like that time of the Cree, because like uh, Eric brought this up in his breakdown. Uh, you know, she, basically Captain Marvel goes and blows up the Supreme Intelligence like immediately after I feel it. her movie, and then it's like thirty years of like the Cree not having a Supreme Intelligence, which is like wild. Uh, and the, basically, the whole time we've known the Cree, they've been in this weird civil war, but that was like never mentioned before. Like that would be good to know more about like mm. what's been going on in uh, on Hala, the Kree's home world. Oh, that's a good one. That would remind me of uh, Nebula's "What If" episode yeah. and just yes. how it just went to crime. Yeah, all my all my deleted scenes, I want nothing to do with the main characters and just weird exposition about what else is going on in the universe. Uh, world building, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. I also want that deleted scene of a love scene between Nick Fury and his scroll wife. I want the deleted scene where uh, Tiana Paris says she loves me. <laughs> You specifically, yeah, Jessica Clemens, Jessica she looks Clemens. directly in the camera and goes, Jessica Clemens, I love you. I know you're watching you, Jessica. That's, a, I would, <gasps> that's an inefficient but great way to sell Blu-rays. <laughs> On each Blu-ray, yeah. they will call you out by name. <laughs> Can I ask you a weird question? Um, do you, because uh, Eric does it to me and I hate it, and you do it to me too. Um, I love David Tennant, but the only time David Tennant says Jessica is in a horrible <laughs> series where he's a monster of a person. Is there a time where you're like, oh, this actor said my name, but it's horrible. 
I can't think of a. There's not. I I've actually never watched Zach and Miriam make a porno, so oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, that, that's Zach. That is his. It's, it's in the Zach title. Zach is not now. actually there a common name. Dear Zachary, a letter from. <laughs> oh my God! Fuck <laughs> not watch that movie, guys. What is depressing. <laughs> It's, it's the saddest documentary that's ever been oh made. You, you oh listen to it and you think they're talking to you. <laughs> that Dear Zachary is, oh, God. Okay, Ooh, don't watch that. Don't um, watch it. But that's a great, we'll, we'll come back to that. Right in the chat, what what movie are you least happy to have associated <laughs> have, with your Have name your name. Or, or, or TV series. He, he does uh, True Blood and he'll yell at me, Jessica, I command you. Jessica, as your master, I command you. <laughs> Whatever in that deep, fake Southern accent. And he's standing like this, just like, I don't it's such a weird justice show. for Continue. Bill. Justice, justice for, for Bill. Vampire Bill. Uh, we also were one day away, a little over twenty four hours away from Echo dropping on Disney Plus. All five episodes all five. said to come out six p.m. Pacific on Tuesday tomorrow. Um, we're excited about that. We will be scrambling to <laughs> make that content, cover it, watch them all, uh, and we're we're really excited. Yeah. Um, let us know in the chat and comments. How do you plan on watching the series? If you're gonna, are you setting aside time to blast through five in a row? Five some, episodes? some of these maniacs will blast through. Well, the five thing, in a row. what is blast through five when it starts at six? You know, it's, you, then you're ending at a normal. You're time, one of the you maniacs. Know? Well, oh, uh, yeah. that's the thing. Okay, so Stranger Things hits at midnight. Yeah, that's a maniac that's thing bad. I do. That's yeah. a crazy human thing that I do. For Umbrella Academy, I do it for everything because I have an addiction <laughs> that I need to <laughs> feed. Like, you, oh, the new season of Planet Earth had just hit. Jessica, are you one of these people that when it's like next episode will start in ten seconds? You're like, well, I'm in. Yeah, that's all. That's all it takes. I, also, if it's even shows I don't like, I just like. I'm like, I, sh I should just finish the season, mm -hmm. and I'll just continue watching. But but for other folks, and maybe especially if you're on the East Coast or you don't live in the U.S. or whatever, and and it's coming out even later, mm. how do you apportion that out? Do you try to do one a day? Are you going to wait to the weekend and maybe mm. get through all of them? Do you try to do two a day? Have fun trying not to get spoiled. That's <laughs> I'm true. sorry. That's, that's the that's the race you're really running is. Who's gonna Who's gonna beat you to it? Yes, and we, as we always say, we will do our best to not spoil anything in a thumbnail. Yeah. Of course, in our content, we will be spoilery, but um, we'll do our best not to spoil it in a thumbnail at least for the initial week, right? Yeah. Is usually you our, got our one policy. Week. You got one week. You got one week, and then the thumbnails are all spoilers, baby. It's all it's all uh, Wilson Fisk uh, decapitated and everything. <laughs> we can't um, do those things. <laughs> we no, okay, we wouldn't do that for a variety of reasons. That's right. Yeah. But um, yeah. Uh, so again, we'll have break. Uh, Jessica's actually breaking down all mm -hmm. five episodes of the show on the new Rockstars main channel, and we're going to be releasing those one a day starting Tuesday. So I think is the first episode breakdown going to come out Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I looked at Brandon. And then boss. episode two on Wednesday and yada, yada, yada. All the way till all five. Yeah. yeah. All the way through Saturday. And there will be an Inside Marvel episode on The Break Room mm -hmm. featuring you two. Mm -hmm. Correct. On That will be coming out tomorrow as well. Correct. Hopefully right at six-ish. I uh, gotta give people like time to seven, watch the show. Like it comes out at five fifty. <laughs> um, I went a little in on it. I realized that me and Brandon, when we were talking about it, I was like, oh. I sound like a crazy person. Evan's going to edit it down to a tight five minutes. Yeah. The, the entire Inside Marvel's going to be five minutes? It's five minutes. It's five me going, you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> really quick, as fast as I can. <laughs> and then probably a second Inside Marvel. Yeah, to maybe cover the last on, episode On Wednesday, maybe. So the first episode of Inside Marvel will cover like episodes one through three, mm -hmm. and then a four and five in the second episode. Great. Yeah. Uh, and then who knows, depending on what happens in the show, there will be other content from Jessica, from Eric, from other hosts on the new Rockstars channel, and we'll probably end up at least mentioning it in other break room stuff. Yeah, and well. Green Questions episode live on Thursday, too. Ooh. So Great. Can I say one thing? Yeah. You can say one thing. Zoom in. Thank you. Thank you, Dashiell. <laughs> you have to watch these breakdowns because it's my birthday on Wednesday. Oh. Hey! Oh, early birthday. It's Happy birthday. birthday. It's my birthday on Wednesday. And if you don't watch it, I'll find you. Whoa. I will find you. Again, good way to sell Blu-rays. <laughs> you, person who bought this, I'm going to find you. Uh, we've gotten a handful of promo clips from Echo as they're kind of ramping up their promotional uh, package, uh, including some fight scene stuff, some action. Uh, let's roll that clip. Do you remember when, um, oh my God, Superman, um, Henry Cavill did the... That wasn't yeah, for Mission anyone Impossible but himself. Five. That was for no one but himself. Mission Impossible 5. 
He went. Whoosh. He cocked his arm like a uh, gun. Yeah. That was so ridiculous. And Let's he just talk about himself. Mission Impossible again. No. I love uh, Mission Impossible. <laughs> Do you not like Mission Impossible? No, 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 I do. Oh, but okay, just, no. we can't get that derailed. We've already, <laughs> hey. um, our, 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 no, and we will get derailed, but we can't go back John to Rick's a, on Netflix. a Mission Impossible movie that came out six years ago or whatever. But it's the hottest one. Continue. It is, it is probably the best, oh, one. The best one. Um, we said it, the first, when the first Echo trailer came out and it was just grimy and brutal and bone snappy. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> we're excited for this series, right? Uh, really excited to see what, what the other action sequences look like. I feel like a lot of that clip was in that first trailer. At least like the chair Some kick the, yeah. was in it, right? Yeah, I don't Am remember. I right? There's been so many clips. What? It was the, the I, mean, I mean, I'm sure this stuck with everyone. The, fire, the, the fist with blood down yeah. his hands. And I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> what I said, what are we doing? I don't remember him doing this show? in Daredevil. Um, what, what are we hoping to see? This is a prompt for the chat too. Like, what would you most like to see? And don't just say like Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> Who are you talking to? Spider if Spider-Man showed up in Echo, that would be true. I mean, what a, what a flex for Marvel to yeah. be like, hey, we wasted one of our Spider-Man uses <laughs> on Echo. Take that, Sony, kiss like, my ass. It's, it's your genie three wishes yeah, yeah. and we burned one on. I wanted more Spider-Man. The monkey's paw <laughs> Yeah, the monkey's paw. <laughs> Echo kills Spider-Man. <laughs> Holy that oh my could you imagine the war the war that would happen if Echo killed Spider-Man? Oh my god. Just like accidentally she like hits him with his car with her she car kicks, she's or driving. She kicks the, the chair and it just hits him in the wrong way and he just never gets back up. He gets million dollar baby by Echo. Oh. Yes, yes. oh my god, the world oh my god. <laughs> I would just be like, oh, so Marvel just wanted I to just I think if like Kevin Feige's last day, that's what happened. He, <laughs> he buries some characters on his last day. <laughs> but in in like completely not epic yeah, ways, yeah. So like almost just... slip and fall type <laughs> injuries. Yeah. The I mean, it's like baby is so funny. <laughs> When 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 James Gunn was like, yeah, I, I gave, I made it so Nebula stole Bucky's arm, and I'm not explaining it at all, and now Marvel has to deal with that problem, right? In the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. I, I don't think. Uh, creators of Disney Plus series are getting that kind of leeway. I don't think they get away with it. I don't change you can't. So. No, you can kill Maria Hill if you want. <sighs> you can kill Maria Hill. You can kill Talos. You can kill someone else died in that show. Talos' wife died in that show. Gravik. Gravik. <laughs> my boy. My Gravik's boy. friend who said Gravik. Oh time. yeah. The, oh, <laughs> well, when, Gravik killed all those innocent He had a fun trolls. name. I, I wanted to say his name was Toes, oh, oh, but it wasn't that. Right? <laughs> A he had a fun name. I want to say it was Toes. <laughs> it was like one word, right? It was like a, it was uh, it was Beto. 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 Okay, Beto. not even close to Toes. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of William Keats from Guardian T. That's right. <laughs> you said Toes. <laughs> Toes is a good nickname. I like Toes. Uh, Beto makes a lot more sense. Um, <laughs> I have Toes, so I'm named Toes. Is that what Deep said? <laughs> I was so mad at that scene. I kind of wanted to uh, shake her. Okay, uh, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm genuinely very excited for Echo. Yeah. I think I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all six episodes the first night, but I'm going to try to get there. Well, there's only five, so that, that should make five. things easier <laughs> for you. It is only five, and you can yeah. watch them. If you start at six, you're going to go. Right but I, I would like to see in that show like something like really surprising. I mean, it doesn't have to be graphic violence, but I just remember. Watching Daredevil, the the first season of Daredevil on Netflix, the sequence where like Kingpin smashes a dude's head in a car door. No, I don't and want you're that. Like, it's in the pilot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's the, the first, first episode. episode. Was yeah. it the first episode? And it's just like holy no, cow. No, no, you're. It's the brothers, the Russian brothers. That wasn't the first episode. Are you talking about the Russian brothers that he keeps slamming? Yeah, there's one dude. Oh, that, I guess there's mo he did it more than once. It was his move. It was his signature move. I'm, no, I can't have that. That. <laughs> I know. I'm really excited, and and it's funny if it's not this, but like. I like the idea of it being like a self-contained show. Yeah. yeah. But this 100%. is just her story. I mean, we know Daredevil and Kingpin are going to show up, right? But, and that's fine. But like, I don't need it to connect to any other series no. or any other properties. I don't need S.H.I.E.L.D. or the D.O.D.C. No. showing up. I don't need... If, it, if it's her, she's got some bad guys she's got to fight. And also Kingpin's there pulling some yeah. strings or something like that. I mean, I Wong that. will show up. We'll have Wong in that episode. He's legally required. He's now missed two series. That's like the biggest gap we've yeah. ever had. He wasn't in Secret Invasion or Loki Season 2. No. Um, okay, we really quick, we want to shout out our friends at Factor Meals for sponsoring the break room this week. Uh, they're a, 
we've we've worked with them a bunch in the past. We enjoy their food. It's always uh, it flies off the shelves whenever one of those boxes gets delivered, and they're yeah. rock stars. Okay, that's a popular uh, lunchtime treat. Um, they're ready to eat meal delivery service takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery store, prep work, cooking fatigue, all that kind of stuff. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. But we Zach, do they have like a lot of variety with these meals? Because I don't want the same old same. Brandon, they have over thirty five meals to choose from. What? That's right. Uh, so you what? could you could have a different meal every day of the month and still have a couple of days left. <laughs> but I'm okay? keto. They have keto options, <gasps> Jessica. Oh. They've got calorie smart keto. I think there's a vegetarian or vegan friendly, gluten free. They have all those kinds of options. Uh, and I gotta say this, they taste really good. Um, you have over 55 weekly add-ons you can do, a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Skip the overpriced takeout trap. Factor is cheaper and way more delicious than takeout. Get chef crafted restaurant quality meals delivered right to your door. They're ready to eat in heat in just under two minutes, which means more time for you. More time to plow through five episodes. <laughs> of, of Echo. Of Echo. Skip the sixth episode. It's all filmed. <laughs> it's all filmed. This, all the filmed. Six? That, that's me staring at a load screen for 50 <laughs> minutes. Uh, head to factormeals.com slash breakroom5050 and use code breakroom50 to get 50% off. Whoa. That's code breakroom50 at factormeals.com slash breakroom50 to get 50% off. And again, I want to test. Everything I've ever had from Factor is tasty. They actually, I think their their trick is they're very flavorful. You don't realize that it's like, oh, this is a little healthier or lower calorie or something like that because there's a lot of flavor, good seasoning, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, thank you to them. And also thank you to NerdRiot.shop, our merch partners. I'm wearing a, yeah. a hoodie from our friends at NerdRiot. Brandon's got the... Uh, got the, the Flurkins. Meowvils the is meowvils. the name of that shirt. The um, Meowvils. Look, folks. I got screwed this holiday season. Whoa. I looked under that Christmas tree and there was nothing for dear old dad. I'm not a dad. Uh, <laughs> but there was nothing for It's me. also not in the prompter, Brandon. Yeah. Why did you Why even did make you yourself? I'm going off. I'm going off. I'm scared. If you're like me and you got screwed this holiday season, treat yourself. Go to nerdriot.shop. Yes. Uh, we're going to have some Echo theme merch already up there. There's a kingpin shirt. Who's the monster? I'm the monster. I've, I've also got a, I've got a 17 got a Loki ounce. mug. Loki mug. Whoa, did you just brag on your ounces? That's right, guys. God it doesn't damn. look, we have a 17 ounce and 11 ounce version. And you see them side by side, they look similar. So if you're either self-conscious about how much coffee you drink, <laughs> or you want to sneak in more coffee, yeah. just know that you can have a big mug that doesn't look that big. You know yeah. what? That mug is great for just milk, because I want to drink it, and I don't want people to know that I'm drinking it. You drink just milk? <laughs> it's good for my mug? nails. <laughs> your nails? It's That's good true. for my nails. That's as true. soon as I take like one sip of milk, my nails get so what are you, like Lady Deathstrike? Yes, I like am malnourished, milk? Brandon. I need the calcium. Uh, yeah, we've got to make sure Jessica keeps her bone density up, OK? Ow. <laughs> she just almost snapped her finger <gasps> on the table. Give me some milk. <laughs> Go to nerdriot.shop. Yes. Uh, OK. The Golden Globes were last night, kicking yes. off award season. Big, uh, glamorous Golden Globes. And I'm going to talk about Joe Coy's hosting. <laughs> dude, Damn. dude. Damn. Joe Coy is my one of my friends' uncle, and I was like, dude, <laughs> your uncle. Tough that, night. Dude. Tough, Tough night, night for the Coy household. But some of New York stars in Breakroom's favorite films and properties scored big last night, and a bunch of actors that are going to be in upcoming MCU properties. Mm -hmm won awards, so that's fun. Barbie won the very first ever uh, award in the new category of cinematic and box office achievement. Yeah. Which is basically their oh, like- that sucks. Category oh, no. for movies that made lots of money. I, when I said that sucks, I meant, oh damn, that means that like, the, the just the number one movie of the year will get that. Yes. Every well, time. maybe, I mean, because right? they, they listed basically, all the ones that were nominated were most of like the highest grossing films of the year. Because like Mario was on there. Yeah, because I was like, that's the thing. Is like, that well, because yeah. if you're in one of the other categories, oh, you, you get eliminated couldn't. from that. So Oppenheimer got the but legit. Barbie Oscar. was up for best. But Barbie picture. makes sense too. Um, I love Barbie. I don't know what their qualifications were, but either. but you know what? It won. Margaret Roby got to go up there, Guardians accept an was award. One of the movies, yeah. this and that. And and this is something we're going to come back to. Barbie made one point four billion dollars this year. I gave them a lot of my money in merch and in tickets. <laughs> That's true. I, yeah. They they got me. Uh, which is just wild to think that that movie. I mean, that any movie makes that much that much money. But like in a year in which no superhero movies crossed a billion dollars this year, 
And no Marvel movie, I think Guardians made the most and it did not come that close to a billion dollars. I think it made like 700 million. Respectfully though, it's still a fandom. That's right. Barbie is still like, it's still Mattel, it's and, still a And probably movie. like a much more underserved fandom than yeah. superheroes that have been getting three movies, five movies a year. I, yeah. Not in the same vein as Barbie at all, but I think that way with like uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe, I'm like, oh yeah, I forget that these are still like fandoms and nerddoms yeah. that we just don't really see because we're in the superhero ones. Right. And like, you know, uh, Oppenheimer did very well this year as well. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of Oppenheimer success is, should go to Barbie. No, 100%. Because a lot of people saw that movie to like complete the, you know, the the goal of seeing Barbenheimer. Did yeah. you? They saw both. Did you do the double feature? Uh, not the same day. Oh, okay. I went uh, Friday, Saturday. I did a Friday, Saturday. And, and just the Barbenheimer being a thing, every time one of those movies got mentioned, the other one got mentioned. It was just like free yeah. word of mouth publicity for both yeah. films. Well, right? I think studios are now gonna try honestly doing it. There was one that was that was supposed to come out this year on the same day, and I was like, I think they're gonna try to recreate, because it's it does make them both there money. There was the joke of like the Napoleon Wonka, <laughs> but they <laughs> yeah, weren't out the yeah. same day. They didn't come out <laughs> the same well, day. Well, and, and the, the <laughs> extra weird- your hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the extra weird thing was those were two different studios. They did not coordinate it. No. It happened organically. Right. As opposed to one of those studios was Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers over Christmas 2023, I think had four movies in theaters at the same time. They had Wonka, The Color Purple, Aquaman 2, and I think one other movie. They Barbie. did nothing to recreate, no. you know. Uh, well, wasn't it mainly also just like um, uh, Christopher Nolan being like, I'm not moving my. Well, it was back. both. It was both, both studios playing chicken. I don't even think it's the studios. I think it was like. The producers. The producers. Yeah, the producers like, no. Both being like, we're not moving, and the studios being like, please move, <laughs> to please. I mean, I was gonna go see both regardless, yeah. but I was also like, I'm, I'm gonna go see both. Like, it's okay, yeah. and you don't need to move them. And yeah. I did a double feature, and well, I switched my outfit. And I, I've talked about this a little bit on The Break Room, but doesn't it feel like we're entering a world, it used to be like, if you were the only big movie released on a weekend, you're gonna make a lot of money just mm -hmm. because there are so many people that just go to the movies out of habit. Every weekend. And like, what's the new big movie? Fine, I'll see that. That era feels like it's over, yeah. and now people need a reason to go to the theater. Yeah. And now that might be, I'll go five times in a month when there's five great movies, and I might go zero times in a yeah. month when there's no reason for me oh. to go, you know? That's sad to think about. Were you were you guys that family? I was that family where my family was like, yeah. yeah, we're going to. I was the blockbuster family for too long, and then we did the movie theater like, oh, early on Saturday, it's five dollars. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, in high school, that's what you did every Friday. Yeah, because yeah, because you couldn't you couldn't go to Nothing bars or. <laughs> yeah. And I remember it was also yeah, it was just seeing. I would see like bad movies. Yes, I saw like oh. the movie Forty Three because it was just. <laughs> I saw all about the Benjamins opening day. Now I that's not bad. Yet. That's not a bad. Movie. I was in four when that came out. They did a rerun. Yes, the number of bad. I had PG and PG-13 movies I went to see because it was all I could get yeah, into yeah. and I needed to go to the movies that I day. I saw the talented Mr. Ripley in high school <gasps> oh! on like opening weekend. Yeah. Why? Wait, I don't know. That's rated R, Doc. Hey, I was cool. It's kind of a heavy movie. Evan? I'm um, just doing a little bit of reading. I guess there's a Barbenheimer Wikipedia page now. Um, because there's a movie coming out. <laughs> <laughs> about like Barbenheimer? Mm -hmm. It's oh, a giant, it's a giant know. bomb that's I a Barbie. Like that. uh, apparently, Coyote vs. Acme was supposed to be yes! released <laughs> on the same day. Keep going. Oh, really? Keep going. That was Warner's original movie that they had slated. And Tell they, us more about that, that movie. That got Batgirled. That got back. It's very, it got nobody girl. will ever see it. No, it's getting sold. That, it that movie and will it's come out. Actually, okay. it sounds good. I'm yeah. so mad. Yeah, the um, creative team behind that was like sick. God, I'm so mad. I want that. I want um, to see that movie so bad. But then, yeah, I think part of the like unspokenness of like why those movies released on the same day was due to the fact that Nolan, you know, was mad at Warner Brothers for Tenet, the release on Max, so he left, and Universal had already. Uh, book the date for Oppenheimer. Yeah, remember we got that teaser for Oppenheimer like a year yeah. ahead well, of time. that's Nolan's right? date. That's like yes. his good luck date. That's when he put out his oh, yeah. movies. That's when Interstellar came out. Like, and and then in the theater, they had the giant cardboard cutouts for a year timer. Yeah. And yes. I was like, they're not gonna stay here for this a is, year. It was the example of like the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. Yeah. Just partying <laughs> and like uh, getting right. along great. You yeah, know? what's gonna happen? What's gonna, what we're gonna do here? Uh, what we're gonna well, do. And, and we're gonna come back to and mention some of the other people that happen at the Golden Globes, but let's let's talk right now. So, okay. looking mm -hmm. forward, right? 2024 is gonna be an interesting year at the box office for films because so many movies got delayed due to writers and actor strikes. 
right? So it's a thinner year than normal, which is a bummer because 2023 was a bit of a, it was the best year since the pandemic, mm -hmm. as far as like things kind of bouncing back, largely built on Oppenheimer and Barbie and a couple other big successes. Feels like it might be a step back. We're getting one Marvel movie next year, MCU Marvel, then three Spumsy right. Spider movies, zero DC movies. Um, the general like kind of number of tentpole movies is going to be down a little bit next year. Do we think that any of these movies, and maybe in particular Deadpool 3, can capitalize on that kind of Barbenheimer energy to be able to become like a gigantic box office smash? I mean, the number one thing going against Deadpool 3 making a billion dollars is like it's R rating, right? That makes yes. it tough. Now, I don't, did Oppenheimer didn't cross a billion dollars. No, but it made like 800 movie. million, yeah. I think. And Barbie yeah. was an R, right? No, no it was PG-13. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what, died. if there's been an R-rated I think Joker Joker movie? made a billion dollars. I was going to say, yeah. gonna say Joker, but I don't think Joker 2 is going to do as well as Joker 1. Well, yeah. oh, I guess, I'm sorry, that is the one DC movie we're getting this oh, year. Oh, yes. Oh, Joker. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's interesting. We were just talking earlier. What would it take for Deadpool 3 to make a billion dollars? So just for reference, in the history of MCU, there's been a lot of movies that have made that amount of money, mm -hmm. right? Captain Marvel, all the Avengers movies, right? Like, it was kind of almost routine that a lot of those movies would make that kind of money. But post-pandemic, uh, that has not been the case. I think Guardians 3 was by far the most successful Marvel movie last year, and it did not come even close to making a billion dollars. Uh, and there hasn't been, like we were saying, I think Barbie and Super Mario were the only two movies that made a billion dollars last year. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not just for, you take for granted that an MCU movie is gonna make a billion dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you said, especially an R-rated, there's never been one in the actual MCU, right? That's a, that eliminates a lot of younger audience that might go to see yeah. a film otherwise. I mean, there might be, you know, you might consider uh, if you're, uh, a youngish parent, you have kids, and you're like, ah, oh, my kid's 13, but I'm gonna take him to see Deadpool because this has like a bunch of heroes in it that I liked, and I want my kid to see this movie. I'm trying to think of like No Way Home made a billion dollars. Yes, well over. Yeah. And that's a movie that was like kind of like leaning on, in a way, nostalgia, right? And cameos of like older things that people wanna see that. But I don't know about Deadpool making a billion dollars. I mean, it might help that it could be in the theaters for. Two months. I think have like a very healthy run. Some of the things going it. for it are because there's just less movies coming mm -hmm. out this year. There's less competition, right? So you might get some people that might not be as jazzed to see a superhero movie or a Deadpool movie, but just like ah, I'm going to the theater. What's out? Ah, Deadpool. Sure. Was it Deadpool two that they did a PG thirteen cut and put it out at Christmas time after? Was the that, initial run was that of the on, movie? Was that just on Blu-ray or was that actually I in thought the they theater? did that in theaters. They had like a PG-13 cut of Deadpool that and, they put and out. Here's what I'll say. Part of this conversation was I could be making this up or Mandela affecting this. Yeah, thing. that's for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, ever since ever since you had your brain injury, Brandon, you've been making up a lot. I had a brain injury? <laughs> oh, no. Now we have to tell him all about oh, it. Oh, no. And he's going to forget well, it again. you gotta, you got to roll up your sleeve and look at all the tattoos we've already put on your arm. Um, so... Uh, part of this conversation is spurred by the Creative Arts Emmys were also over the weekend. And was it Ryan Reynolds won yeah. a Creative Arts Emmy for Welcome to Wrexham, his uh, mm. docu-series about the Welsh soccer team. Um, and he accepted it in Deadpool gear. Yeah. Should we play it? Do we have it loaded up? Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Um God, Mr. Lively couldn't be here to accept this broken Emmy, so he sent me on his behalf. First and foremost, Wrexham, we love you. Thank you for letting Rob and the other guy tell your story. Come riembe, bitches. I'd also like to thank the Academy for this honor and for not asking us to attend the televised awards show with the real celebrities. I'd also like to thank FX and Disney for their support, and in exchange, Mr. Lively promises to not fuck up my next movie. Lastly, the Oscars. You're on notice, motherfuckers. Maybe we can get a token VFX nod next year. The amount of work on Hugh and Ryan's face alone is at least worth a nod. Background? Well, it's snowing. Shut that in LA. Do you think he actually had the mask on or they were doing, is that a digital effect? Oh, no, I think it was real. On. I don't know. Um, it came out afterwards too that the Emmy he's holding is actually Hugh Jackman's Emmy. And uh, because he did, he needed an Emmy as a prop to shoot that video. 
So he called up his buddy Hugh Jackman. I feel like they must be neighbors, right? And yeah, and, they're probably staying like in the same. Yeah, maybe context. that's it. Yeah, maybe while they're, they're just shooting, kissing each other. And okay, Jessica. Uh, <laughs> in my so dreams. Jackman's traveling in with his enemies. Is that what you're saying? Well, oh, that's a good point. Um, but apparently, I make my assistant carry me Emmys around. This is the. I think the best part of the <gasps> story was up, Hugh Jackman's like, I don't think I have an Emmy. Let me check. He's like, Oh, I do have an Emmy. Here it is. But it's broken. It only had like one of the wings. Is on it, it from the TV look. show that he did with his ex-wife? Or, or he did that HBO movie uh, oh, about the teacher yes, yes, or yes, the yes, guidance yeah. counselor or whatever. I'm I don't know. Really. It's for one of those things. It wasn't for that singing show he had. That didn't win any Emmys. <laughs> oh. He had a singing show. He did a. He had a show that I was like had. Show. It was like a musical sh TV show. I did not know that. Where it was like not based in Las Vegas, but he was like a casino guy. Again, Cop rock? I could be making this up. Yeah. Right. What are? I, you, I think you I had were a traumatic in brain head. injury, <laughs> and they won't tell me what. And, it was. and a gas leak. It's wild. I have a gas leak. Hugh Jackman won the Emmy. In 2005, for hosting the Tony Awards. Oh, Whoa, no. get, get him the fuck out of here. Don't you know? give an Emmy I'm to not, anybody. That, okay. The, genuinely, now I'm a little pissed because they will, and I still haven't you got, got mine. An Emmy for, for digital comedy. Hosting the Tony Awards, where he does a great musical number that ends with him doing I Am Wolverine, that was written by Dan Harmon. And Rob Schraub, they wrote on that Emmy or that Tony Awards. They what, wrote the that. Tonys? I know. They wrote I that they... before him. Oh wow. Wow. Go um, to Sarah Bareilles. Uh, give her the. Uh, I liked her performance at the Tonys. Well, we'll do that for another day. <laughs> um, so uh, all this is to say, a it's fun creative uh, way to accept uh, a non televised award, I believe. Uh, but Ryan Reynolds is so invested in this character, in mm -hmm. this franchise, he probably gets a nice chunk of the profits. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, that like doesn't it feel like they're gonna go all out, right? Like as you mentioned, I mean, Marvel should. Yeah, they've done really fun stuff, like release different cuts. I mean, the the Deadpool Yule Log they did that one year, right. right? Like there's no, and there's a lot of promotional type of stunts that make more sense for Deadpool than they do for Iron Man or Avengers mm -hmm. or something like that, right? Like you can do sillier stuff, weirder stuff, to try to get people's attention, maybe. Mm -hmm. And what is like the Marvel marketing team gonna do all year? I mean, they have TV shows to promote, but. This will be their only movie. I could imagine several trailers for this movie, especially like cutting up footage from old Marvel movie trailers and yeah. you know doing weird stuff like that. He's gonna make our lives hell. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna make our lives hell at this job. He already did like for his liquor. He did like a fake commercial with the girl from that holiday Christmas movie oh, he yeah, was in. Oh yeah, that's right. And I was like, oh my god, I forget that Ryan Reynolds just does this. He calls up his friends for an Emmy. He'll just go over to Halle Berry's house and be like, hey, can you dress up a storm really quick? I gotta do something stupid. And I'll be like, great. I gotta break down every lip that like lip sync they do or whatever. Um, I think I think the movie's gonna do really great. I don't know how it can reach like the billion. I think. I think it's also really hard right now with all the leaks that keep coming out because I'm just like, please, I, I know that I talk about it. I'm sorry, but like, I'm like, what? I, I need to, I need, I need some more stuff hidden. I well, and, and hidden. don't you think that that could be interesting? Like, I wonder if if they've some of the bigger reveals in the movie might have already been leaked. So they're like, cool, we got to go back to the well. Let's yeah, let's do some I'm more, hoping. but these are going to be on a studio but and nobody's going to be able to see them. He still that's the shitty thing, and I I know this from John. They still have to send it to Marvel and whatever, and be like, hey, I want this character, and they'll be like, we already have plans for this one. You yeah. can have. A wheel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, you Whoa. can have a big wheel. Wow, they're gonna uh, debut wheel in Deadpool. 3? <laughs> yeah, my favorite X Men. My favorite uh, X Men. <laughs> uh, well, and you know, we've been talking a little bit. It's a strange time for Disney and Marvel specifically right now because there's definitely like the multiverse saga. It's kind of like come to a bit of a conclusion. All the Jonathan Majors, Kang things are kind of like up in the air a little bit before any announcements have been made. A lot of the upcoming projects got delayed and we're still kind of waiting on some confirmation of stuff. A Fantastic Four cast. Um, you know, what the next Avengers is going to be. There's like a lot of, when we're going to get X-Men movies, right? Like, there's a Will lot there of, be a Blade movie? Yeah, ever, right? Um, so there's still a lot up in the air. And I think we know a lot of stuff that's not going to happen they're gonna tell us at some point stuff that is gonna happen. And yeah. it feels like we're due for another Kevin Feige at Hall H, but when San they, Diego yeah. Comic-Con kind of big announcement. But when they do that, then it's gonna, they're gonna say, 2026, and I go, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I will be dead, I will have a heart attack that year. Like, it, I can't wait any longer for this shit. Uh, but also, that's how we feed ourselves the other things that are coming out. Like, yeah. we already been talking about, Arcane's coming. Uh, we can wait, I'm sure the bear is gonna drop another season out of nowhere. We'll, Dune we'll 2, Dune 2, the Spice Girls flow. 
June too. Uh, yeah, and there, there's it's it's though though we're only getting one Marvel movie this year, and there might not be as many billion dollar movies this year. Like mm-hmm. we're not going to suffer for lack of content. No, right? we there's got a it. lot out there. We got it. Um, but I guess throw in the chat, what win does Marvel need the most? Right. Deadpool 3 coming out and being the most successful R-rated movie of all time and like kind of people being like, Marvel's back, here we go. What a way to kick off the next phase. Is it something just like more like Loki season two where it's like, just give us great content whether it blows up or not. Drop X-Men 97 tonight and you will be, (laughs) I will. Tonight, the day before Echo? Wait a minute, hold (laughs) on. Wait, I didn't think about this. (laughs) I didn't think this through. Um, Do you think with like the, you know, the cameos in Deadpool three, right? Like, first of all, Taylor Swift. Do you think that? Do you think she moves the needle enough to just get people to come in for for just her, like people who've never seen Marvel before? I'm gonna say this, and I'm serious. Yes, we um, when I had another job, I we were talking at that job about how big the influence it would be if Jungkook joined Star Wars on any property, oh, yeah. just from BTS, yeah. Yeah. how big that audience would come. Because the thing is, if you're putting her in that role from the X-Men character, uh, but uh, the, the Dazzler? Yeah. Dazzler, yeah. Dazzler, yeah. She'll be fine. Well, is that, is that something that gets announced before the movie comes out, or is that a week two thing? I think like, there was the theory, right, that uh, about um, Eternals, right? Uh, that Harry Styles was going to be in it. There was like a rumor at first, and then it was kind of this like weird rumor of like, wait, Harry Styles is in Eternals. Yeah. And that was kind of coming out before the movie came out. And then the, the kind of buzz that first week was like, is Harry Styles in this movie? And then Variety leaked it and ruined it for everyone. But And I swore my revenge. Was that enough to move the needle for Eternals? That was also a weird time that was still like coming out of no. I mean, also, no offense to Mr. Peter's Styles. Robin. Taylor Swift is a different level. Exactly. Sure, sure. Exactly. I, I just and mean, she's playing herself. Yes. If, if it, it's just like, oh, she's in a movie for 30 seconds and has three lines. Yeah. I guess it, is that, it going to help Argyle? Depends. We'll see. If she just shows up, oh, whoa, are we spoiling Argyle? No, the rumor whoa. is that she's the spy in Argyle. Whoa. Because of the cat. I had a traumatic break. We should break. We should break this down. Um, break down her time, her time cover, and how it's not a good photo. Oh. They did her dirty. Uh, but you know, going back to like, will it move the needle? Taylor Swift improved the ratings of the NFL. <laughs> the NFL, the most popular thing in America, got more popular because Taylor Swift was showing up. That's wild. Yeah, I think she, that's the thing. Is like also when you're like a diehard fan. I'm not a Swifty. I am a part of the Bayhive. Um, but like, I will watch anything Beyonce does. I and I know she can't act. And I will consume it and watch it and devour it and be a little freak about it. So I only imagine the Swifties showing up for yeah. now superhero movies. Because all be you like, need, all you need is an extra fifty thousand people, in addition to oh, the Marvel stands, the Ryan Reynolds fans, all the other people, right? Like to add, oh, they just added thirty million dollars yeah. onto the movie. They will show up. Yeah. To just to uh, uh, devil's advocate it before moving on to the next thing, Ryan Painter in the chat pointed out that Taylor Swift was in Amsterdam. Amsterdam bombed, but Amsterdam is also not. An IP movie, so to right. speak. So yeah, it's it's. I'm very curious, how, you know, how it's going to be. If it's going to be Taylor Swift as a character, or if it's going to be her as herself. Uh, yeah, that's it. The Amsterdam is. A, I think Amsterdam is also such a weird one because they didn't, and that maybe it's just me. I just noticed it because I like chewing up this math. Didn't do a lot of good press for it. Right. Uh, the trailers because that we did see Russell. was a million celebrities that I was like, oh, I just haven't seen them in 20 years. I didn't even know Taylor Swift was in it. Uh, so I just didn't see the movie. I just genuinely was like, I, I heard bad things about it. I'm not going to see it. But I think when you're putting in such a fun property like fucking Deadpool with Ryan Reynolds, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, he hangs out with her. Blake Lively might also show up and it'll just be their uh, friends hanging out. Emma Stone's going to show up. Also, also. R-rated Deadpool. If Taylor Swift drops an F-bomb, I mean, I thought you were gonna say, I thought you were gonna say drop draws. Oh, I mean that obviously. No, cutting it. But I don't think cutting it. I don't think our girls are gonna do that. I thought you were gonna say straight up like like uh, Jennifer Lawrence and no hard feelings. I was like, I don't think she's gonna do all that. Suplex someone butt naked. Nah, that's not Taylor Steez. She don't she need to do, do it. it. When when uh, it. Jennifer Lawrence did, I was like, "That's insane." I think Why? she actually did pick that boy up and throw him. <laughs> the the other question I have for you guys too is like, with something like the Flash, where they you know res you know literally resurrected people and had like a, 
almost too many cameos at the end. Yeah. Is there going to be t- uh, such thing as too many cameos for Marvel? I, I worry. I worry about this for Deadpool three, and I hope that after you know, underneath the cameos, that it is a great script, great action, right, really solid movie. Because now, right, Multiverse of Madness, Flash, right, we've had such a series of movies that have relied on these like out of canon or whatever cameos mm-hmm. um, that like. Th- that power is starting to wane, I feel like, right? I'm less excited to sure. see Hugh Jackman play Wolverine because I already saw Patrick Stewart play Professor X. I mean, whatever, but, right? you know, Deadpool has the the ability because it is tongue in cheek, he can break the fourth wall. Like, it, it not played, it doesn't have to be played seriously, right? Yeah. These cameos can be done in a different way, more comedically, a little more fun. Yeah. They should put us in it. One day, Quinta Brunson's gonna reach out to us and say, "Be in my little show as just the little new rock stars," and it'll be really fun. Can we get her to do an MCU movie? Then she'll have no choice. Dude, why? I do you think? Well, that's the thing. I think Amon Vellani was the exception. Like he didn't really know that she was a fan fan. And yeah. Quinta Brunson and like, um, uh, oh my god, I forget the other Marvel fan, the guy from Reddit. Uh, they couldn't. They couldn't be in like any of the Marvel properties. They would take all the information and be weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't fight back. No, that's why I know damn well they would never put us in it. <laughs> We'd be like, Aaron, take it. No, that's why we should have been Five Nights at Freddy's creators. They'll put you in all their movies. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Five Nights at Freddy's. That's true. Um, do we have some, were there some good comments in the chat, Evan? Folks saying like, what would be a good Marvel win or other yeah. observations? Um, most people just saying, uh, you know, Marvel should earn our trust back. <laughs> God damn. You know what? <laughs> but know your worth, and that's actually good. I love that for it us. It is a valid point. Yeah, I, I would, a nice solid movie would be great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you ain't gonna get that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not even like, it doesn't need to be a billion dollar movie, one of the biggest of all time. Just like, yeah. pleasing, fun. I mean, that was the thing with Loki season two, right? Like, oh, they can still do this. Yeah. They can still make a great show. And still people were comparing it to season one. Yeah. yeah. That was like the only bad part. I was like, please stop. <laughs> please stop. I like this. And they were like, well, I'm going to go to that first thing. <laughs> uh, and, and just real quick on Deadpool 3, speaking of which, Matthew McFadden from Succession won a Golden Globe last night. Mm-hmm. He's going to be in Deadpool 3. Yeah. A role as of yet un- unannounced. We don't know. We just know he's in it. Uh, also, Ayo Adabiri from um, The Bear and Bottoms and, addi- and other projects. Theater she- Camp. Theater camp. She won a Golden Globe last night. Um, mm. She is gonna be in Thunderbolts. She's been announced as being in Thunderbolts. Mm-hmm. Evan is. I think Steven won conspiring too. that conspiring that um, lots of people are gonna start dropping out of Marvel movies because they've all been delayed. Possible. <laughs> I mean, Ayo Debris in you know she's in a, so many things right now. I imagine she's probably very high in demand. You know, Steven Young probably, it sounded like, you know, some scheduling, or he confirmed it was scheduling issues, maybe it's something he's more excited for. I, Who's to say, you know, projects that haven't been shot yet, right. the people will still be attached to them moving forward. But, it is, and, and you know, we should get like a Hollywood agent or something like that to come on the show and talk God. about like the desirability of being in a Marvel project and how that compares to like five years ago. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, it probably is like a solid income for a minute. You're like, yes. oh, I know that I'm gonna get money for at least like, you know, I don't think any, I think very few working actors would turn down a role in a Marvel movie. Correct. But when you're someone like Steven Yeun, who just won a Golden Globe, legitimate leading man, could probably call his shots across a lot of Hollywood for the most part, Mm -hmm. and he's being offered the fifth lead of Thunderbolts, right? Like, he could be the number one lead of an FX series Mm -hmm. or a Netflix show or a whatever, right? Like, that might be more fun for him. But I think it's just the money. And I mean, I don't know what he makes, but I will say the most jaw-dropping thing when I came to Hollywood, which is what the strikes were for, was when I realized how much money actors do actually make. And I feel like that's just like a sure enough money joining Marvel. And he's probably like, oh, I know I can get money. Yes. And people will go and, see this. And, and no one's going to hate me for it. That's like, right. And, and there's potential that it opens up new avenues for you. Yeah. Like, I don't know if he's really seen as an action star. Right, and if that's something he wants to explore, oh, yeah. doing it in Marvel is a great way to do that. I saw him mm-hmm. wrestle in the beef, and I don't think he was that good. <laughs> the, <laughs> beef. Think, the beef. The beef. The beef. Yeah, sorry, and the uh, beef. The restaurant from the bear. The bear. Oh, that's right. Oh, my, crossover universe. My beef and bear. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and there's lots of factors. I I will say, like, if when Marvel had a really high hit rate and they were all really good, being the fifth lead in Captain America Civil War or Avengers Age of Ultron was pretty attractive. Yeah. 
when that hit rate drops, being the fifth lead in the Marvels or Eternals might not be as attractive that's to a not, lot of actors. That's the know? hard part too is like, ooh, this is nice. But then I'm like, damn, I'm here for 12 years. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, do you guys, in the sweetest, most innocent way, in the most respectful way, Chris, uh, Chris Evans, he was like, I love this. But that poor man had to do so much work to himself yeah. to like keep up the look of him in 2008. Yeah. That hairline was gone. And it's <laughs> no. okay. It's oh, okay. No. It's okay. And I love him still. I know. RDJ had the best gig. Him and Ruffalo both have a great gig. Because Ruffalo was tired. Their bodies can look like anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and even for Robert Downey Jr., by movie two, they started CGIing most of the suit. Like the first movie, he had like a pretty heavy suit he would wear for like practical effects. They were still doing some CGI. Uh, but like by the second movie, they were just like, eh, put on these two shoulder pieces and some dots and God, fill in the you, rest. And then poor uh, Paul Bettany and Gamora's He's like, I have to face. sit here. Yeah. Drax is like, I've been here for 14 hours. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, maybe that's a part of it. We don't know what Sentry was going to look like. Right. Yeah. If like, if he was going to have to get ripped <laughs> painted or, or like have to wear like giant foam or be painted green or whatever, right? Like who knows? Um, yeah, so maybe it was the smart move. <laughs> he doesn't have to uh, do anything crazy to his body to be in the beef Very season true. two yeah, or whatever. Cool. Um, okay, the beef. Uh, thank Stop you all so much. Stop making fun of me. Uh, no, from now on, I think that's canon. Yeah. The beef. Uh, the beef. Thank you so much for watching today, our wide ranging headline show. I think the plan, producer Evan, correct me if I'm wrong, is that our Monday show, we're going to attempt to be consistently our headline show. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to touch on a broad range of. Uh, news topics. Uh, the cast is probably going to be close to what it is right now, mm -hmm. barring unforeseen things. Uh, so, <laughs> what? come join us on Mondays. Uh, join us the rest of this week. We're going to be talking about Echo uh, on both Break Room and New Rock Stars. Check out Jessica's breakdowns on the New Rock Stars channel. Check out Jessica and Brandon talking about it on Inside Marvel here on the Break Room. Um, anything else? No. Uh, follow Zach at the New York Times. That's right. Uh, follow Brandon at the Onion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and follow your dreams. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.